Welcome back, everybody. So, yes, it's been an interesting start. No transfers as of yet. We have got three offers out on some players, centre-backs mainly, and the reason we're able to accept those and look to the future of other positions is because of this. So in the Cup, we did lose 4-1. We lost 4-1 because I played the, the CDM, our pivot player, in front of the back three as, like a, as a proper CDM. So it was like a 3-5-2 with a single pivot. Didn't work very well. I did rotate the whole team, so it was a complete backup team. I was expecting to lose, but we were terrible. I then switched it back and adjusted the pressing a little bit, and we beat Coventry soon, and we were one level before they got their red cards. And uh, we were pretty comfortable. And I just thought, you know what? The one thing we seem to be good is forget the cup game. It's defensively in the other two games. And I think our problem is going to be scoring. So that we have to rely on our team being good defensively for us to succeed. We're like the opposite of the Dortmund team, which is very good. I think to have two series going on the channel at the same time, to have them two, so opposite. They're different anyway, because one's a recreation, one's a Moneyball series. So I sold a couple of the centre-backs. We're about to sell a couple of them. So we can start to look at a couple of positions. And I know we've got the looting game coming up here. But James Bree has come up as a potential wing back. Now, I know he's not lightning fast. I've seen him before, but we're setting a cigar on him right now. I'm unsure if he's going to be really quick enough for the right wing back role. I can't remember how fast he is, to be honest. The reason I picked him out is he seems to come out pretty good across the board for the stats early on. Like he made pretty high tackles per game and he got 100% for tackles, one basically, tackle completion ratio, which is good. Not too many fouls, not bad in the air. And not bad triples per game in reference to everybody else that we could see. So I thought, all right, that's actually quite good. So his average rating isn't great, but that's his team that he's playing in. The probably results that, that Luton have got. Did they lose their first two? They, they lost and drew. Okay, so that, that explains it right. So you, you put some context to all the stats. And taking all that information in, I think he's a good signing. And he'd be a good right back. He's quicker. He's going to be a better wing back than Callum Britton. Callum Britton's a really good player. And he's got good match rating. But that's because he's done a lot of defending. And we need somebody who can help us in the other end of the pitch as well. Like, if I look at his report, it can't possibly say pace anywhere, right? No, it doesn't. So if it doesn't say pace, and it's not a weakness, he's probably like middle of the row of 12s and 13s, right? But we'll see at the end of the season. Uh, at the end of the season, we'll, we'll show you all the players and we'll see what we've been working with here. But yeah, so I think he's going to be like a, a sort of hybrid back three and wing back role. It says he can't play there. He will be soon. Yeah, so we played Devontae Cole and Cotton Morris last game. They played together up front and that seems to be a better partnership overall. So we'll go with that again. And we'll go into this game. It's Luton. We'll play this and then we'll see where we're at for the next few days after this game and see what players we can get in if there's any more stats to look at. That should be match day three for a lot of the English leagues below the Premier League. So well, let's see how we go here. It's going to be really interesting to see how the win percentage develops over the season. I'm really excited to see how that looks. Right now, it's not a good sample size, so it's not really fair. But it'll be interesting to see how it goes long term. Carol, from your last match, you should do well. Thank you, David Dunn. And we're underway. They are playing a narrow diamond, incidentally, as we take the corner, and it should be one out of Barnsley. So interestingly, they're not playing the player that we're trying to buy off them. James Bree is not playing. He's not in the team. Highlight Remy Beats is going to throw it into Devontae Coe, who gets it back to Callum Stiles, to Queener, to Palmer. Shoots, blocked shot. Callum Britton gets up to it on the right-hand side. He's going to have to cross it. Oh, Callum Britton. We need to be better there, don't we? We really do. Centre-back gets to it. Jordan Williams, who is a quick... I think our centre-back is quicker than our wing-back on this side. That's a problem. Callum Britton is you know, whipping it across. And it's terrible. Try it again. There it goes. Oh, come on, lads. That was just awful. After it stays, 0-0. Don't lose faith, we're going to say. Callum Britton with the throw into Jordan Williams. Back to Callum Britton, to Palmer. And into Queener. Queener to Styles, Styles to Palmer. It's a bit congested on the middle. We need to get the ball wide. Either work it that side or try and switch it. Not just straight, just switch it across. Queen is in. Surely he's got to finish it. It's calamitous. I don't know what's happened. We'll see on the 3D replays, but it's 1-0 to Barnsley. Thank you very much. It must be a mistake. This must be a mistake from them. So Callum Britton gets it, and he's involved in the goal somehow. So we get a run off the back of the defence. Queen goes in. It's Oh, it's just absolute. That is a <laughs> absolutely calamitous goal. Uh, well, 1-0. We're at home against the side playing a narrow diamond. We've got a chance to really dominate them and create some good chances from the sides as well. Devontae Cole's a bit tidy, comes off, and let's throw on to uh, let's throw on Iseka. The things really happen. Let's go time wasting up. And let's take off Remy Vita and throw on actually no, let's take off Palmer. Let's throw on Oda and we can switch those two. They've gone to 4 3 1 2, which isn't really too different from what they were doing, to be honest. And that is going to do it. 1 0 2 Barnes, it finishes. Told you we're going to have to be a good team defensively. That's three clean sheets in a row in the league. That is really impressive. Okay, they want way too much money for James Bree, like a million up front, which we can't afford. And we doubt we'll even afford that, even after. And I doubt we'll even be able to afford that after all of our um, transfers out. This is frustrating, potentially for us, is free transfers. Now, the only way for us to sign free transfers, I think, is at the end of a season, 
we say that we go back to the previous save from the season before, like we do. So at the end of this season, I'll make a separate save file for Barnsley season one. So when we're in like, I don't know, 2nd of July, when we're looking at the players that have no contracts anymore, we can't see their stats, right? So the only way to do that is then go back and look at their stats from previous years. I think that's how we'll do free transfers if we get around to doing that. If we get promoted first season, I don't often sign too many free transfers anyway. But yeah, just so, so everybody's aware. But the moment I've got it listed by dribbles per game is what we've got it listed as. One start isn't really enough. I mean, Josh Earl looks pretty good. That's three starts. He's looking all right. It's, it's still an incredibly small sample size, but we've only got so long before the window closes, right? So we've got to start looking at players at some point. But Josh Earl in the early sample size actually looks okay. So I'm going to scout him as well. Mark Bowler's dribbles per game is slightly lower, but his heading percentage is pretty good. Tackles is, isn't is great. Foul. So like, I know he's actually not too bad as a player, but he's not scoring amazing. I'm going to shortlist him and scout him just in case his stats get better. But... Okay, so looking at centre backs here, I just made a little like search criteria for centre backs. We've got team conceded per ninety minutes, like that can be a bit misleading. So I just want it there next to appearances as the first sort of two things you need to look at because I mean you could have a good defender and a bad team, right? Uh, mistakes leading to goals is an interesting one. That's a good one to have there. So the overall numbers of key tackles. Then we have tackles per game. Then we have tackle completion ratio. Then headers one per ninety minutes. Header ratio overall interceptions per 90 minutes and then clearances just overall then fouls goals player of the match and a bit of pass completion there i could put dribbling in as well there's only so many you can fit in and then lastly here we have pass completion and i probably would have put like dribbles per 90 minutes here as well just to see if they travel with the ball up from the back something like that because even though in real life we differentiate between dribbling and running with the ball in like coaching courses and stuff they don't really do that on the game very much so that's the best way probably to identify it but I think for now, we'll just look at this. This this gives us enough for a centre-back, I think, to see what we're dealing with before we can even then scout them. And we're going to need to do a lot of scouting to be able to identify who's actually using it. But Matthew Platt stood out to me here. So he's made four starts, which is the most you could possibly do at this point in the game. Team conceded per 90 minutes is 1.33, which is, we don't really know too much about that. It only gives us a bit of a, additional information. Goals, or mistakes leading to goals, is zero. So that's good. He tackles is four, which is pretty high is one game which is like a match or goal saving or chance saving like tackle tackles per game is 1.5 and he wins 100 of those that's quite good headers one per 90 is extremely high especially for the number of starts that he's got because a big ever sample size win percentage is 86 like he just screams out to me side center back in a back three just doesn't even foul players per match one he's just brilliant and he doesn't give and he doesn't give the ball away and he's got good match rating like there's nothing bad about him so i'm gonna scout him he's in league two though is matthew platt so we're gonna scout him right okay it's literally been seconds for you but for me it's been about 20 minutes of trying to swell the swell like all of these custom views and everything it's just taking me ages to try and find you know each position then try and find the exact right stats that you want then after i finish a couple of them there was a bit of a glitch where if you have too many columns it was just glitching with the ones at the end. It wouldn't add new ones in and then it wouldn't let you fiddle around with it. It just took ages, trust me. I finally got there. I will make these available for you to download yourself from Steam. So you'll be able to download them for yourself if you want to do this, you know, at home and then you have to spend as much time as I did just looking for it. So we've moved on to central midfielders now, finally. So I saw it by average rating first and then I'm going to look at appearances really second. So we scrolled down. We need somebody with at least, I think, three starts. And the first one there were like Abu Adams here. So, central fielders, we've got assists per 90 minutes, chances created. So, what I've sort of done here is I've got, like, the absolutely crucial things I'm looking for. And this is for the advanced central fielders, not the pivot. You've got assists per 90 minutes. You've got chances created per 90 minutes and clear-cut chances created overall. Then it's appearances. So, that's, like, the core things you look at. And then you look at the rest. So, look at pass completion, key passes per 90 minutes, dribbles per 90 minutes, see if they do some dribbling. Distance covered, which doesn't seem to... That might be broke. I noticed, I think, win percentage in the search bar and distance covered by the looks of it might both be broke and are not working correctly. So, unfortunately, we might not be able to have those as stats. Might have to try and check that ourselves. Uh, but everything else looks good. If it stays broke, I'll just remove this and add something else in instead. And you've got, like, tackles uh, per game and all that sort of stuff. So, I think tackles per game is important. Tackle ratio, um, then headers one ratio and all that kind of stuff. So we've got enough there. I think it gives us a good enough idea, right, of the player, the kind of player we're looking at. On the list, you've got Cameron Brannigan here. He's got four starts. He's got 0 0.75 key passes per game, but he's got, quite importantly, three clear-cut chances created in four starts, and that means pretty much every game he's creating a clear-cut chance for his team, which is incredibly good. Could be set pieces, though. I need to remember that. But it might mean that he's not got many assists per 90 because his team is terrible, right? It could be something like that. So he's definitely worth scouting. Now, remember, he's actually not too bad as a player, so we'll definitely scout him.
I wish it would shortlist as you scout them. Maybe that's the thing I can put on. But yeah, he looks quite good. Now I'm looking at everything there. He gets quite a few fouls, which I don't mind. Get his foot in. Uh, interceptions per 90 gets normally one of those. That's not bad as an overall player there. I wish we could see his distance covered, but he looks quite good. He dribbles not that often. Passes the ball quite a lot, but that's fine. Okay, so now we move on to striker, and we're going to move on to a completely different set of like stats here. We've got goals, penalty score. Now, that's really important because when we see a striker that's got really good minutes per goal, all that kind of stuff, it's how many of their goals are actually penalties in it and are inflating their stats, right? That's the first thing I want to look at as a coach. So we look at all that shot percentage on target, expected goals, appearances, and after that. So this is our like important stuff, then it's appearances after that. So we're going to go through till we get somebody who's not on loan and who is actually had at least four starts. So Daniel here has got four starts. He's got three goals, which is quite good. Only one of a penalty. Minutes per goal, again, looks like it might be broke, which is a shame. That's a really important stat. Shot percentage on target is 43%. That looks quite good, to be fair. Expected goals is only 1.32. So he's probably scored the penalty, which has inflated it by one, then another one on top of that. Shots per 90 minutes, 1.63. And he dribbles a little bit at the back line. No clear chances. More of a poacher type player by the looks of it. So we'll scout him definitely. Nishan Burkhart. Now, I know he's a good player. So he's actually been worth scouting, I think. And I'm going to look closely at his stats. He's not playing for, I think, it's Freeburg. He's, is that, is it? Harry Cornick here has got three appearances, scored two goals. Again, so this is sorted by average rating. So he plays for Luton, who we know don't, didn't start too well. So you've got to think two goals in three games in a team that hasn't won yet. That's actually really good. Shot percentage is very high on target. Expected goals only 0.74. So looking at those stats there and shots per night is only two. I think he's an excellent player to bring in because he plays in a team that he's, they're not doing well and he's got a lot of good stuff and he's created a click at chance. Like, again, small sample size, but we need to get players in now because of the time of, you know, the time of the year it is. So I'm going to scout him and that's probably going to do it for now. It's not going to be a massive transfer window because we didn't have many stats to play with for this first season. And that is going to conclude our sort of scouting for now. So what I'll do is we'll skip a couple of days, play the QPR game, and then we'll probably continue a few days after to see if we can get any players in. So I'll see you in a second. Here we go then. We did just sell two players, two of our centre-backs, and the lads completely kicked up a first. They are not happy with our lack of depth in the squad. So hopefully that doesn't screw us in this match. But that's why they're all unhappy. And hopefully we can get some players in before too long. Same team. And we'll go again. Assistant manager says, keep it the good one going. Okay. And we're on the way. Yet again, they're playing a three at the back. A lot of teams playing three at the back, incidentally, in the championship this year. And I'm just going to add... Okay, so I've just added half chances and miles wrong, which I always like to see that in the in the match stats here. Give me a corner here for Barnes to the far post. Said, and it's in one. Come on, why not to Barnes? Jordan Williams, who's the new vice captain, incidentally. The, we did sell our vice captain. I didn't realise it was our vice captain. <laughs> and Jordan Williams has been given it, and he's just scored ahead at the back post to make it one nil to Barnsley. Come on, boys. Okay, there's a highlight here. It's going to be kicked long. We're going to head it clear. It's going to be played in behind by QPR Dykes as it plays it through. Oh, it's clamorous. Took a big deflection, but luckily Jack Watton, the number one heat goalkeeper here, manages to get the save. And they've just scored from a corner. You're going to see the replay. I actually turned away and took my uh, headphones up for a second because I didn't think it was... Oh, okay, we're not going to see it. It was a corner anyway. It's one. So two far post corners make it 1-1. We're going to say... I don't like... Oh, no, let's not say that. We'll say... Keep going, we can win this. Styles is going to come off. We're going to put on... Oh, let's put on Bassi as the deep man playmaker defend. Devante Cole's going to come off again and we're going to throw on Aaron, left striker. Again, nothing's happening, is it, in this game? I'm going to change him to a support duty because that's what I originally had, I think. Oh, no, he was a defend duty, actually, on the original tactic. Oh, do I... I don't know what to do here. A high line of engagement, maybe? I don't know. There's a highlight. This could be a goal because it's going to make the highlight before the game, uh, before the substitution is made. Keener has it, plays it into Aaron Leia. It's Saka to Morris. Aaron's in. Surely he's got to finish it. He's at the post. I don't believe that's why we need to. That's why we need a striker. Can't break in behind with any of our strikers. Then what we need is strikers that can finish, and we don't have that either. So a bit of problems. Cotton Morris is going to get to this. We need somebody supporting the middle quickly. Morris has it. Plays into Oda. Play it across. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. No. Why would you shoot? Goal kick is taken. We win the ball. Vita has it to Odo to Leia Saka. Vita has it. He's going to have to probably get rid of this. Oh, he's going to cross it. Morris. Oh, who's that? It's in. Come on. Barnsley 2 1. The money ball system's working so far. All we've done is sell players. We've not brought anybody in. But that is 2 1. Cotton Morris just knows where he needs to be. He's just going to look to the little gap in between the centre back and the other uh, centre back. Is he going to get into a gap or he's just going to stand on him pretty much? And it's a volley. Goalkeeper's out of position 2 1. Barnsley. The highlight later on here for QPR. They get the ball to the far post and it's going to be a goal. I don't believe it, man. I don't know why he gets so free. I'm just looking at this here. 
there's no need for him to be so far over number five. Like we've already got two players next to him who are marking nobody. So I don't know if that's like a tactical thing. I don't think we could have helped that. And if there's two two, I'm actually really annoyed about that. I say sympathise, but I'm actually annoyed. There was no way we should have thrown that away. I think what I forgot to do is I forgot to put the the side centre backs on to like just ordinary defend, uh, like defensive centre back roles. So that'll be for next time, I guess. Yeah, when you can't score too often, you need to make sure that doesn't happen. That is not good enough. That is really not good enough for me. Not good enough from the team either. That's annoying. Right, anyway, next episode. Okay, next episode is the Birmingham game and we'll oversee any remaining transfers. Then it'll be the Bournemouth game to finish it off. So we'll just continue through a couple of days here in case anything happens for the end of this episode. Give me a second here and I'll see if there's anything to bring to you. Okay, we've had an offer accepted for Matthew Platt. We're able to get offer accepted for basically 100 grand with 50% of the next sale going to them. And we're going to try and get him for quite a low amount because I think he's quite a good quite a good centre back for this level or as a backup one at the very least uh, we'll see he's accepted that contract so we'll see how that goes we've just had an offer accepted for Harry Cornick it's only about 200 grand up front and some instalments not too much actually so he'd be a good as a striker with a bit of pace and that can score so yeah let's see what we can get his wages down to yeah, if he has a promotion wage rise because if we go to the Premier League his wages won't be that much anyway so I don't mind that but it's that and that will give and he's accepted that. It's good. I better not put non-promotion release clause on these players because I don't know if we... I, I'm doing it out of habit because that's what I would normally do for a, for a normal save in this sort of scenario. But I can't guarantee we're going to get promoted. I better be careful with that. Burkhardt's going to be the next player we're going to bid for here. Okay, Burkhardt, they're going to let us loan for 2,100 a week. So that's going to be good. Okay, I think that's going to do the episode. That's, we'll finish it there. We've seen us now put bids on three different players that were all on our list for like the, the stuff we were looking at. I think we'll end the episode there. We've got a few offers out now on, um, on players to bring in for the end of the transfer window. Hopefully we can get them in for this season. And what I'm looking for for the next episode will be to play Birmingham and then hopefully in the next few like days and a couple of weeks, some of the, the scouts, some of the scouting reports will come back so we'll be able to see a bit more of their pros and cons, see if they've got certain strengths and weaknesses in their game that will add. Because if we know a midfielders, you know, we can work out what kind of midfielder I suppose they are. But if they're like a midfielder that doesn't pass much, does dribble, and it comes back that he's got pace. We know he's a quick central fielder that can dribble at players. That's good. We, he's like our number 10. He's our, you know, central fielder attack, as it would be. But if he hasn't got pace, as an underlying strength, it could be a box to boxer. And if he's got none of those, and he's more of a passer and gets more interceptions, we know he's a deep enough playmaker defend. That's how we're sort of roughly looking at those things, right? And strikers, we need a couple of strikers that can run in behind, and we, could, they will, we can then probably sell one or two of these lads that are useless, basically. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's into the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series and the concept of it all. And hopefully we can start getting into selecting players based on their stats as well. Could we get past sort of the transfer window and we get past all the transfers. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.